about 20 years ago, I took a public access training at a, a public access center outside of the uh, city of Milwaukee. I'd never used any video equipment before, uh, but I got very excited about it. And I was wor working in human services as a social worker, and I started thinking about ways of involving the work I was doing and, and somehow using media to do that. And it really changed my life, just taking that public access training. It's one of the most amazing resources we have in this country. It is something, uh, it is a public forum, an electronic green space, where uh, folks from all walks of life can really come together across, you know, the dial and speak to each other, learn about each other, um, engaging creative self-expression, public dialogue, community problem solving. And it's one of the few spaces that's left that's a community commons. It hasn't been commodified, it hasn't been commercialized. Uh, public access is, is not, it uses television, but it isn't television, it's more participatory. Uh, it allows people to, to tell their own stories. If I see a, a news truck in my neighborhood, like a you know, local news station, I go just, oh God, what happened? Because I know they're only there if something really horrible happened. Uh, if I see a public access producer in my neighborhood, oh, I go, oh, I wonder what they're doing, because maybe they're talking about the community gardens, maybe they're interviewing someone in my neighborhood who's lived there for a long time. And you know, I, um, I believe in, in community-based media. I don't think the dominant media serves the American people very well. The best example I can use is a metaphor. Let's say that uh, at any given moment in a little city, there is a river and an old lady lives in the, in the bend of the river. She has got this beautiful little house and she uh, is happy. And then suddenly one day a dumpster comes along and dumps a whole lot of trash on the property on, besides her. And then she goes to the city and says, how is that possible? And the city says, well, we gave a permit for that. And then she goes to the local station a public station and says, well, I don't, I do want you to do anything about it. Make an article about it or make a show about it. And they don't because they say, well, it's not very interesting, this story. And then she goes to an access station and says, uh, can you help me out here? I have a problem. They're doing this to my property. And then the people at the access station say, do you know how to handle a camera? Do you know how to edit? And she says no. And then they say to her, well, we'll teach you how to do that, and then you can make your own item. One of the challenges that you have as a fundraiser for public access television is the fact that there are a lot of assumptions in the funding community that public access is taken care of by cable. And so you have to educate the funders about the kind of the changes that we're facing as a as a public media environment, that, that the cable franchise dollars are not stable and that we are at the whim of really the cable operator and the political will of our elected officials to actually ensure that we get our money. There's plenty of funding for uh, you know, the big profit-driven dri uh, corporate efforts, uh, but in order to find funding for local, uh, particularly local access is constantly a challenge. Uh, in Seattle, we're right now in the middle of um, a franchise agreement between the city of Seattle and Comcast and Comcast is basically uh, playing hardball like they've been doing all around the country. They're a huge corporation, they have deep pockets, and um, they have basically not wanted to support um, access, and they have a lot of local communities scared. A lot of the hurdles are very similar. Um, a, lot are, a lot of folks are dealing with the fact that the cable franchise model is not funding their operations at a level where they can really deliver services. And there's nothing more frustrating than being a nonprofit that has a mission. Many of us are nonprofits that are independent of the cable company. And there's nothing more frustrating than being a nonprofit that has a mission to deliver services and you set out to do that and you do so at a certain funding level and then you're constantly having to fight for that basic funding level. So we are actually um, thinking about to more how we can uh, be self-sustainable. Uh, so not only depending on franchise fees, but also how to do like a fundraising at the grassroots, grassroots level or a city level or federal level or even private foundations. You know. Part of what I've been uncovering is that you can't really write grants <laughs> because the foundation sector doesn't really um, want to be bothered because they have so many other more pressing human, human interest concerns. You know, that, 
you know, like health concerns and education and homelessness and these, you know, these are human things that, that it's really hard to make a case for what we're doing in media. Like a granting organization, when it gives you money, is also, to a certain extent, determining what you're going to do. And while there's many, from Prometheus is, is strongly grant funded, but we've had to really be very, very picky about how we applied for grants because we wouldn't, we didn't want to change ourselves in order to meet the grant standards of a foundation. I think a paradigm shift that's going on in current access centers now is a more aggressive stance towards community building and collaboration making, not only with other organizations, but with the people those organizations serve. One important shift seems to involve um, bringing people into an access context and not just giving them the tools, hoping that they'll use the tools, but providing the expertise so that they become the speakers without having to learn the methods of production. I think this is a pretty, pretty radical departure from, say, the early mid-70s vision of access, where very few people operating a facility would be able to train people to make their own program. We, we work in a cable television environment that is going through just like regulatory changes all the time, and as the public interest stations, you know, we're going to be bounced around by all those issues, you know, inevitably. We don't, we're not well funded um, in general, so we, you know, when, when the government and the cable operators, you know, make decisions that impact us, we're going to have to really react. This whole issue of community media is based on a very simple principle, which is that communities themselves decide what's good for them, what media do they want to see, and we're seeing now in Sacramento, in Washington DC, in other state capitals, that the phone companies are getting into the system and are trying to unravel the whole community media system. They're trying to take control away from local communities uh, in favor of um, big government and in favor of the phone companies. So I'm going to give you one website where you can find information about all of this and it's www.grassrootscable.com. Thank you.